All right, last section is on assessing normality. Um, and really, the question about assessing normality is, is my data normal? How can we tell that if we're looking at a data set? Well, you can look at a uh, histogram, and that gives you a pretty good idea. Um, but there's two other methods that we have. And the first is, does my data fit the empirical rule? Okay, does it fit? What percentage of data should be within one standard deviation of the mean? 68%. What percent of my data is actually within one, per one standard deviation of the mean? So you get the mean, you get the standard deviation, and you check to the left and right, and you say, how many pieces of data are in that actual range? And if it's close to 68, you're good. And then what percentage of data are within two standard deviations of the mean? It should be 95%. And what percent are within three standard deviations? It should be just about 100, okay? And so I took a data set here. It is a uniform distribution. One to the rest of 99 all over 21, okay? The mean is 11, standard deviation is about six. If I go plus or minus one standard deviation, we see that there's not enough there. It's a little bit low. And if we go plus or minus two standard deviations, it's a little bit high. And if you actually imagine these two curves, so this is a uniform distribution, so it looks like this, okay? And a normal distribution should look like this. So what do you notice within the first standard deviation, okay, we're not getting enough because look at all this extra, this stuff that we're missing. Oh, it's such a shame. We're missing all that stuff up there because we're really just getting like this pretty much, all right? And we're missing the top up there. When we go out two standard deviations, okay, we're, we end up getting the whole uniform distribution and we get 100% of the data when in reality, this wants to have some whiskers that should be going past there. There should be about 5% of your data beyond that and there isn't, so not a good fit. And I'm glad, I'm glad it's not a good fit because if, if our assessment of the normality of a uniform distribution came out to say, sure, it's relatively normal, then I would say, all right, it's not a very good assessment of normality because 62, like, or maybe if you thought at first, you're like, oh, 62, that's close to 68, 100, that's close to 95. But we want it to reject things that are not normal and a uniform distribution, not normal. And so it misses the mark. All right. The more reliable method is called a normal probability plot. Okay. And what they're doing is they're actually graphing Z scores on this side. Okay. But they're the Z scores that you would get if you take the X value and you do X minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So it's a Z score that you get from the X value. Okay. But you can also get a z-score if you know the place in line, if you line up your data in order and you know what place they are, then you can get a percentile and you can calculate a z-score based on the percentile, okay? And if it's normal, then these two numbers should come out the same. So whether I calculate the z-score from my x value and I'm getting a negative z-score, well, it should also be a negative z-score from my percentile. And you'll see that it'll be a huge cluster of them in the middle that are all lining up and then it starts spreading out, right? Because there's a lot happening in the middle and there's not much there and it should be on the line y equals x, okay? That's your sign that you have something that is fitting um, is because it hits this line y equals x because we want the z-score calculated both ways to be the same. And it should be clustered in the middle with fewer things out at the wider z-score values okay um you can look um here well let me show you i did a normal probability plot on the calculator you can make this which is wonderful so i put in that same data set so stat edit this is just the numbers one through 21 there um i missed three so i had to add three at the bottom in case you're wondering why i skipped three there but if you go to second y equals okay this last plot over here is called is the normal probability plot Okay, and if you use that and you hit zoom nine, you're gonna see this picture. Does that look linear? Okay, and notice it's not really the line y equals x because these are negative z scores and negative z scores, okay? Um, and they just line up your data points in order, okay? Um, and we should see them following that path there, all right? Um, what you see here, if you look at these guys, is uh, normal scores, okay? Which one looks normal, A, B, or C? 
C looks normal. And which one, which graph looks normal? Right there. Okay. This one, see how it's piled up on the left and then it spreads out to the right? Oh, that's what skewed left looks like. See how this one's piled up on the right and then it spreads out on the left on the lower z-score values? That's what skewed left looks like. Okay. So that is normal probability plots and using the empirical rule are the two ways to assess normality. Okay. Good luck. Farewell.